Hey guys, what's going on? It's your old buddy Tim with Revolved Realty, back with one of my old buddies, John Moray. How are you, John? Oh, not too bad. Just having a great time, you know, and I'm really enjoying uh, this real estate business. It's you know what? Fun. You are killing it. Trying to. Give you a, a little background on John. I've, uh, John first got on my radar. He was a salsa dance teacher. That's what I was. And from what I understand, you That's can still cut a pretty nice rock. Just a little bit with my wife. Just, just, <laughs> just <laughs> <laughs> you took us down just a hair. I, I love that. You can tell the old married guy, nah, yeah. just a little bit with, little bit, with my wife. But um, now you are, uh, you're in the real estate business, but you kind of come at it from a different angle than I do. And so what I thought I'd do is have John on the show today and let him tell you about what he does and how he does it. And a lot of people want to do what you do. And a lot of people do it badly and don't don't make much money in the process. Oh, so yes, exactly. Let's uh, let's just uh, dive in. You are. Would you consider yourself a a wholesaler, or what? What is, what is it exactly in real estate that you do? I'm a real estate investor. A real estate investor, and you invest primarily in in anything that makes money in real estate. There you much. go. Anything for a buck, right? Yes, anything for a buck. And you know, wholesaling is just a small portion of that. Mm -hmm. You know, but there's a lot of ways to make money in real estate and people mistakenly think it's always about the fix and flip, which is right. and you know, let's just give it where the problem's coming from. You know, everybody likes to watch the wonderful show HD T V mm -hmm. and they think that's the real thing. No, it's a show. Right. So, and then when people get into it and do that, that's where they, they really fail. Yeah. And you and I both see that a lot. A lot. Too. But, well, let's talk about wholesaling to begin with, and then we'll want to go into the other investing side of things, because you're right, HGTV, they're, they're the bane of my existence because everybody wants an HGTV house. That's right. And then you have folks who watch HGTV and watch the flipping shows and think, well, hey, how, how hard can that be? But really with, with house flipping, let's start with, with wholesaling. Tell us what wholesaling is. Okay, wholesaling is nothing more than you are selling your interest in a contract. Okay. You're not selling the house, even though the house is attached to the contract, but you're actually selling that contract to another investor that might have a, a better vision or they want to make more money on that particular property. The wholesaler is there just for speed and they just want to do quickly send the send that contract to somebody and then that person will just buy that contract for a small fee. Okay, so let's say I'm a homeowner mm -hmm. and I have a house I want to sell. You know, my options are I can, you know, list it with a realtor and go through all of that rigmarole or I might have someone, a wholesaler, who is willing to come in and, and pay me kind of a wholesale price because it's the, the wholesaler's goal is to get the house at a price that they can then assign that contract to someone else and make a little bit of money on top, yeah, right? But, yeah, but it won't be on the seller side to worry about that. The seller would just have to agree, I want this much for the property. Right, exactly. The yeah. seller has to say, let's say uh, the seller wants... $50,000 for their property, and the wholesaler decides that is a good deal all the way around. Yes. And then they put a contract in place to to hold that property yes, until they the find property. someone to buy it. Ultimately. Yes, the wholesaler will have a contract okay. with the seller. Mm -hmm. And then, then, of course, now the seller's out of the picture. The wholesaler will contact his point of contacts, all, all the investors that he knows. Hey, by the way, I have this particular property. Here are the numbers. Do you want it? Right. End of story right there. And then now the end buyer is going to be that investor. Right. So uh, the wholesaler itself pretty much just sold his interest to that investor. Got it. So the wholesaler really is kind of the middleman. He finds the property, he ties it up, right. and then he finds an investor to take take over, and he's paid a fee in a between. Fee. That's right, fee. Let's make that distinction. Uh, some people, especially realtors, don't like wholesalers because they think they're stealing the business. Well, mm -hmm. they're not. What they're just doing is they they're able to find those deals that are pretty much I call it underground stuff. You know, mm -hmm. they're just out there. It's hard to find some of those things, and the wholesalers can dig those up. Mm -hmm. When they find those, now they need to get paid accordingly as a fee. But they're selling the interest because they got it under contract. So now they're saying, hey, I don't want, I really don't want to deal with this here. Right. Here, investor, you buy it from me. Yeah. So, but but the contract. Yeah. Not the house. And and the wholesaler is. There is some risk involved on the wholesaler's part because they may not find an investor. What happens then? Okay, that's where the issue comes into play. A lot of wholesalers try to get into the business without understanding you need your network. 
Okay. Network is very, very critical. So if you're going to be a wholesaler in this business, it is critical that you go ahead and join the real estate groups around town or wherever you are. Go ahead and meet other investors in the area. And then that's how you actually know who is going to buy what. Right. Then after that, then go out and start looking for properties. Mm -hmm. You know, get it under contract and then say, hey, you know what? I just want some quick money by my interest. Here you go. Right. That's it. Remember, it's not a commission because they're not dealing with the public. Gotcha. They're not selling it out in the public. They're not mm -hmm. listing an MLS, so it, it you know it it does not violate the law. Right. A wholesaler is selling their interest in the with, with that contract. Right. That's what. That if is. if someone's interested in becoming a wholesaler, is it better for them to find the investors first, and have that network built before they actually go out there and start looking for properties? Yes, it's always good to go out and network right away. Okay. At least you get to talk to the experienced investors and see how they're doing it. Then, after maybe a few months of doing that, then go ahead and start going wholesaling. Yeah. You know, but sometimes, you know, sometimes they'll find the properties right away. They go, oh, boy, what do I do now? Well, just get it under contract. Then go ahead and start attending these meetings. And all you have to do is say, by the way, I have this property right here. And especially if the numbers are good, mm -hmm. the numbers have to be very good. You know, you just can't, it can't be marginal. Yeah. Let, let's talk about how hard it is to find a property, find a good property. Okay. Okay. Uh, what 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 is that? If someone's wanting to get into the wholesaling business, and you're very free with with sharing, um, what do they do? How do they start sussing out those properties that that might become good options for them? Most of the time, the ugly houses. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. And trust me. We we buy ugly yeah, houses. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We I, I buy lots of ugly houses. The ones that my wife calls it the match houses. Mm. Just put a match to it. Yeah. That's what my wife calls it. <laughs> And yes, I can sell those properties without a problem because I find the right people to buy them. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're going to get into this business looking for those kind of properties, it's not very hard. You can't find them in Madison, though. Yeah. Madison is not the town for it. Madison is a new city, a lot of new houses. We don't mm -hmm. have an old, old, old area, like 30, 40 years old houses. We mm -hmm. don't have that. There's other towns around that have that. Huntsville has that. Mm -hmm. So go and drive those areas. Look for those houses that are boarded up. You know, uh, Try to avoid if it has a condemn. Avoid that if you don't want to deal with that kind of mm -hmm. stuff because you have to deal with the city. But if you're okay with that, go ahead. B buy those. Mm -hmm. But you're going to have to really do a lot of rehab to them. Find those properties. Look in the tax records. See who owns it. Send them the letter. And then see what happens. Right. Now, if you want to spend a little bit more money, uh, do skip tracing then you could find them. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of ways to find, try to find the owners. And yeah. that's how you get going. Then now you learn how to negotiate to get that property in your hands. Right. But you need to know your numbers. Yeah. The numbers and that, are that's critical. that you make your money up front. Make your money up front and to buy. Yeah. There, there are plenty of wholesalers right now. They're very marginal. Mm -hmm. They try to buy things so marginal. And then you have the new investors that hurt us people that have been doing this for what, what, quite some time. They try to buy it also on that marginal and then they fail. Right. But because they bought it wrong. Mm -hmm. So you have to buy mm -hmm. it correctly. Now, cor correct me if I'm wrong. You're saying they, they bought it. Are they really buying the property? Well, or they are they a, just they tying have, it up with a, with they a contract? They have it under contract. It, that's okay. just a so it's an option to buy. Yeah. 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 You could call it option to buy, but no, if you have a hard contract, it's a contract. Right. Right. But you're not going to have to, if you're a wholesaler, you're not going to go through the process of actually buying the house. Sometimes you have to. Do you? Mm hmm. De depending on your profit margin. See, there are other investors out there. They don't like that the wholesaler is making a lot of money, mm -hmm. which is to me, you know, that's ridiculous. Yeah. Because what if that wholesaler was able to negotiate a good deal? Mm -hmm. That's on him, mm -hmm. right? So good for him. But, you know, if, if the profit is, is pretty big, double close. Mm -hmm. And that's definitely you need to have some funds back there to close it and then sell it. Right. You mean, right you mean a double close where the wholesaler buys it buys and immediately it. walks across the hall and then or slides it. down to the other end of the table yep. and sells it to the investor? Yes. Yeah. You can so they they own it for just a very short amount short of time. Short amount of time. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. That, that ha that's, a, that's a regular occurrence. Yeah. What what do you prefer or do you? Is it all the same to you? They're all the same to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because uh, I have access to funds to where I could do a double closing all day long. Yeah. No you, you mentioned that it's really good to look in older neighborhoods and you mentioned boarded up houses but not all of these houses are boarded up i mean some of them have people living in them oh, they're yeah. very they're habitable uh it may just be a situation where the folks want to sell and are willing to sell at a less than retail price motivated sellers yeah what is a mo what motivates a seller 
whatever reason you can think of, <laughs> it's there. Yeah. And a, lots of times, really, is that they're in hardship. There's some mm -hmm. kind of stress in their life. And just imagine what kind of those stresses are. There's so many different ways. And Sickness, health, divorce, all those things. Bankruptcy, all of those things. All yeah. those things affect their decision making. Right. You know, and yes, and you never know what's going to happen. You know, I drive around Decatur all the time, and for a few months, I don't see any for sale signs anywhere. But mm -hmm. I drive around the same neighborhood before you know there goes a for sale sign. Yeah, because things happen all things the time. Happen. Yeah, you know, you never know what's going to happen to change their life. Right, and and I think you, I know you do. You come at it from a point of view of how can I help these people? Yes, you're not yes. there to take advantage of their hardships you're there really to give them a solution to things yes uh, well, my approach always is uh what can i do to help you yeah that's always my approach and i don't know how many times i've walked away without having the property in my hands mm -hmm. and actually i give them my cards they call me anytime mm -hmm. i'll be more than happy to help you and they do yeah they call me and say john how do i do this you know because i really just can't sell it to you because it's not you know beneficial to us so how can we sell this i tell them yeah I, I actually have a client right now that is was a referral from you. Yeah. You talked to them and, and that model didn't fit what he needed to do and you told yeah. him to call me. Thank you very much. Yeah, John. that's right. You know, and that's how it is. You know, this is a team sport. Mm -hmm. Many people think that we're in competition with each other. Mm -hmm. We're not. Mm -hmm. We are a team sport. Uh, I would say this all the time in the RIA that I run is that the guy next door might have ten properties that he wants to sell, but you don't know yet, but then you're mad at him for no reason. Right. Then he approaches you and say, hey, by the way, would you want to buy my 10 properties? What are you going to do now? Still stay mad? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think so, right? right? You're going to say, well, yeah, let, let me go buy them all from you. Yeah. So, you know, so you, you can't be mad with everybody. Don't treat people as if, like, they're your enemy. This is a team sport. Mm -hmm. We help each other out. Yeah, very good. Well, now you do. Well, there, there are some I, cutthroat I, folks in both our, well, yes, our so business. Let's just a, not go there, right? We don't, we don't have time to list them all. But, um, let's, let's talk a little bit about uh, the other thing that you, you do, is, and not just the, uh, the wholesaling, but you also do, uh, you will buy a property, fix it up, and rent it out. Yes, I've done that too. I, I do have several models that I do. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'll fix a property that I know I want to make my rental. I'll do that. Or sometimes what I'll do is I'll have a property that I'll fix it up just a little bit and then I will have an end buyer that has some skills. I'll have them go in there and design it like the way they want to. Mm -hmm. So I will owner finance that property for them mm -hmm. because some of these people, they just don't want to go to the bank or, right. or they have bad credit. You know, there's something going on that they can't get a loan, so I'm the bank for them, mm -hmm. and they'll fix it up like they really want to. Actually, that model has been really good because people love the fact that they're going to make the property their own. Mm -hmm. They put their own paint colors. They put whatever they want in there. They're going to adjust them like the way they want to because it's theirs. Yeah. And they love it. Yeah. So you buy the property, then you... You hold the paper, so to speak. Yes. You you are you're the bank. You finance it for them. They go in and do the renovations and repairs, make it their own, and they are just paying you. Yes. For uh, for living yeah, in the they, house they and it, the yeah, and you do a, a like a standard fifteen, twenty, thirty year mortgage. What do you do? I tailor it according to what monthly payment they want. Okay. Okay. And I do sometimes require them between three to five years. I want them to refinance me out. Right. And that makes sense. That makes sense, yeah. you know. Yeah, and they, they love it because and lots of times what they'll do is they'll add five or ten thousand dollars every six months mm -hmm. to reduce that payment. Mm -hmm. So pretty much sometimes the the, the property is paid for. Yeah. Before that three years comes around. Yeah, and I, I really like that model because there you know not everybody can afford to go out and get a mortgage on a four hundred thousand dollar house. Yeah. You know, and to to have that kind of service, I think is really really neat. It's very helpful. It's a great way to give back. Yeah, this is actually one thing that maybe the agents can use is if you understand the seller financing mm -hmm. bit of it, mm -hmm. I don't know how you guys going to adjust the, the payment, the commission structure mm -hmm. for that. But then if they, seller, let's say, is out of town, but they, they the price is not right, they could seller finance that property, but you had it listed before, mm -hmm. then you could actually just go ahead and get a fee for that. Then you're out of the picture. Now that's seller financing, and then there you go. Right. So really, if you're holding the paper, you can be bought out at any yes, time. Yes, you could be bought out at any taken time. out. Yeah, yes. that's very cool. So what, what are your words of advice for the people, like we were just talking about, the HGTV crowd who think this is easy to do and want to get started? What are, other, other than the fact that you can lose your shirt, what are some of the other <clears throat> pitfalls and obstacles? Well, when you do a rehab, it's a full-time job. 
Mm-hmm. A lot of people forget that's a good that, point. Yeah, they, yeah. they think this is, a, oh, I'm just going to have my crew out there and do this. No, you're going to babysit everybody. Right. It, it, I'm, I'm sorry, you know, a lot of people think it's not like that. It is. It is a full-time job. This is called active income. Mm-hmm. And also be well aware that just because you're done with the property fixing it up, it's going to sell tomorrow. Yeah. You know, this might be a month, two months, six months down the road. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, there's there's one person that I talked to one time, and he said that he made $30,000 at closing. I said, great, that's awesome. I said, how long did you sell the property? He said, six months. Mm-hmm. So imagine that. If that happened to you, you made $30,000 yeah. at closing, but then it took you six months to sell. How much did you really make? Right. You made $5,000 a month. Is that enough to feed your family? Mm-hmm. You know, and with all that work that's in there, you got to think about those things. So before you really jump in, maybe get with a contractor, shadow them for a little bit, mm-hmm. uh, see what they're doing, and see how much work goes into something like this and how much money goes into it. Yeah. It takes time. If you want to make this part of your business plan, you need to be doing volume, 6, 10, 20 a month. Mm-hmm. You should be having all these running at the same time. Yeah. You do one, two, three uh, a year. It's a hobby. Kind of a hobby, yeah. It's a hobby. Well, and I think another thing, you know, my daughter Chelsea does a lot of flips, and we talk about this, where people, they either miscalculate the math, they, they, they think it's going to cost less to do a rehab than it actually does, but in their mind, they can just raise the price. You know, I, no. I want to make, you know, well, it, it, it there, there's one in, in Huntsville right now. I'm not going to mention where it is, but it basically has been sitting on the market at, you know, it's like a half a million dollar flip forever. And that's kind of what they did. I, I think I know what that one is. Yeah, everybody knows that. I think I know yeah. that one, yeah. They, they got it at a good price and they had plenty of room, but they just kept adding on and adding on and, and thinking that that retail price would grow. That is <coughs> not how it works. No, it doesn't. And, and that thing is, when you start rehabbing houses in the $300, $400, and $500 range, wow. Yeah. Now, now, look at your audience. It's about this much. Right. Very, very little. Right. So you, but when you go into the 150 and below range, now you have a wide range of people that's going to buy that. And those those go by really fast. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, upper price houses, they don't go by that fast. Yeah. So some in the lower prices. Like, lower yeah, price. Yeah. Mid, mid to lower, you're good. Yeah. Is there a minimum bedroom? You do two, two ones? I, I, I have only a handful of two yeah. ones. I like three and twos because mm-hmm. most people love that, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, where I, I, I play... If the if the property is two thousand square foot and up, it's slower to sell. Mm-hmm. You know, but anything below that, it, it's gone within a week. Right. What are your thoughts about? And this kind of goes with the you, you put too much money into it. Like for example, Chelsea again, yeah. she does higher end flips. She she, sure she, does. she does the granite. You know, not everybody cares about granite and backsplashes and all that. You know, for your business model, is it more of just the just the good basic house kind of design? You don't go in there and. HGTV it up. I do not at all. <laughs> not even close. Uh, I have one rehab going on right now because we had to because of the backside was falling off of the house. Mm. So, we, yeah, I wanted it to be safe. So I said, let's just rehab this thing. So that's what we're doing right now. Most of the time, I like to buy properties that are solid. They might look so ugly inside. That doesn't matter. Yeah. That, that's cosmetic. It's the structure. Make mm-hmm. sure the roof is good. Uh, the foundation is good. All that stuff. If all that is great, then they go, that's, that's a good candidate for me. And then actually I have skilled people that like to buy that kinds of properties mm-hmm. because they want to put their own little touch to mm-hmm. it. And it's great. Yeah. You know, so I really hardly rehab anything. Yeah. Do you have a formula that you go by when you're looking at buying a house? You know what you've got to get that house for to make a profit on it? I, I When I walk in, first I, I need to know my area. Mm-hmm. You know, when you're going to be doing this business, drive around, know your area, pull up some comps, help have an agent help you if you don't have access to MLS. Mm-hmm. And I know my area is that as long as my after repair value is no more than $90,000, that's mm-hmm. a good candidate mm-hmm. for me. So, of course, uh, I tell this to my friend Dale that uh, I want it for free. <laughs> but, you know, that doesn't happen. Yeah. The way it does once I've got two of those. Yeah. But generally, I, I want it to buy low, 20000 and below if I can. Mm-hmm. Uh, I try not to go over 30, but every now and then, if the numbers are good, it will, especially yeah. if I don't have to do much to it, right. and then it works, you know, yeah. but I try not to go over a 90,000 ARV, once in a while be 100, but the after repair value, I don't want to go over 90, right. because that's my sweet spot, and the houses are sold so fast. Yeah, yeah, very good. Um, in the time we have left, you, you mentioned earlier your real estate investment group. Tell, yes. tell the folks a little bit about 
where you do that and what what it's for and who attends and because you mm-hmm. I came to your last one I think it was a huge crowd there. yeah it, it was, boy there was more food it was like a, yeah oh yeah it was like a Baptist funeral we love to food. eat that's the thing <laughs> see uh, I call mine the, the real estate mixer because uh, when come from the salsa world yeah we, we like to have fun and eat and, and party so pretty much my my event is a party and it's normally on the third. Tuesday of the month so we have one coming up here in November the third Tuesday of the month and we do it every other month because there are other groups out here that have mm-hmm. theirs every month mm-hmm. well I, the feedback that I got is John please don't make this every month because we're, we're attending too many yeah. of these too many yeah too many so I make mine every other month so this November the third Tuesday we're having it is uh, six o'clock it'd be at the Legacy Grove subdivisions on Providence Drive and it starts at uh, six thirty, so please come join us. It'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, and and thank you for having me at the the last one. I actually went oh, there you and, killed it, brother. Well, I spoke no, about he, something. I don't remember killed, what. Yeah, he but, spoke uh, about something. He forgot. <laughs> he killed it. It was yeah. good. So if if folks want to get in touch with you, either to learn more about what you do, or per, you know maybe they have a property they would like to talk to you about, how do they get a hold of you? Yeah, the best way really is uh, um, here's my cell phone number two five six four six nine. 3099. I'll say it again, 256-469-3099. Or if you really want to also, is, let's say forget my number, just Google Salsa in Huntsville. My number <laughs> is on there. I, they, people, I still get calls for that because I am the Salsa Daddy here in Huntsville. So I still get a lot of phone calls yeah, for that. Yeah, I know we were at a, a mastermind meeting once and you yeah. actually got up and did some salsa. I know, dance. yeah. I'm in know. the back of the room doing the boot scoot and boogie. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm the salsa real yeah. estate guy. Exactly. So yeah, I'm, I'm not going to get rid of that brand of I'm the salsa guy because everybody knows me as that. But right now I am the salsa guy here in Huntsville. Awesome. The salsa real estate investor <laughs> yep. guy. There you go. Right, salsa real good. estate investor guy. Yep. Like and that. as always, if I can do anything for you when it comes to real estate, uh, 679-0704. Look me up, Tim at revolve.com. And if you uh, want to get old John, we're always hanging out. Just let me know. And, hey, buddy. It's a bad it's habit. It's been a pleasure. It is a it's bad a... habit. You need to get a better class of friends. I know. <laughs> I have you. <laughs> Take care, guys. Thanks. Thank you.